Hello guys, today we shall be studying about a disease called as hyaluronemurine disease which is also known as neonatal respiratory distress syndrome of the respiratory medicine. But before studying about the disease proper, let's learn some basics. So what is a surfactant? Surfactant is a substance which decreases the surface tension, okay, which decreases the surface tension. And what is it made up of? It is made up of dipalmitoyl phosphatidylcholine DPPC. Who is going to produce it? It is the type 2 pneumocytes of the alveolus. So in the alveoli, you are having two types of cells. Type 1 pneumocytes, type 2 pneumocytes. Type 1 pneumocytes comprise nearly 95% of the cells, whereas type 2 pneumocytes are only 5%. Type 1 pneumocytes are slender, they are very thin and the function as we know, it is the gaseous exchange. Type 2 pneumocytes are having the function of secretion of the surfactant. Okay, now the surfactant is secreted. Who is going to remove the secreted surfactant? It is the pulmonary alveolar macrophages. Okay, PAM, nothing but the pulmonary alveolar macrophages is going to remove the secreted surfactant. And we know that the surfactant synthesis starts in the intrauterine li life itself by around 20 weeks and it reaches the peak at around 35 weeks okay and if the birth of the baby happens before the 35 weeks okay it can cause neonatal respiratory distress syndrome nothing but the hyaline membrane disease here you are able to see the histology of the alveolus you can see the type 1 pneumocytes the flat cells as well as this stout cell which is nothing but type 2 pneumocytes or the type 2 alveolar cell so what is the function of surfactant? We know that surfactant decreases the surface tension and by decreasing the surface tension, it maintains the alveolar stability. Okay, it maintains the alveolar stability as well as the compliance. Compliance is nothing but the stretchability of the lungs. Now I inspire and whenever I inspire the air, what happens to my lungs? They will expand. There will be expansion of the lungs. Whereas when I expire, there will be shrinkage of the lungs okay there will be shrinkage of the lungs but remember it is just the shrinkage and not the collapse the collapse is not happening because of the presence of surfactant but what happens in the prematurity there will be surfa surfactant deficiency and as a result of which there will be collapse of the lungs collapse of the lungs is nothing but atelectasis okay atelectasis happens in the prematurity due to the deficiency of surfactant now in order to open up these collapsed alveoli i have to put in extra efforts i have to put in extra breathing efforts in order to open it up so this eventually results in respiratory distress okay respiratory distress and the respiratory distress coupled with prematurity so what is happening in this prematurity there will be less glycogen stores meaning there will be less energy so respiratory distress coupled with less energy results in hypoxemia and we know what happens if there is hypoxemia the hypoxemia can cause damage to the alveolar cells and this damage results in death of several cells and also there will be futile efforts of healing which takes place and results in the fibrosis and this is why there is hyaline membrane formation within the alveolus okay the story did not end over here the hypoxemia can also result in vasoconstriction as you all know okay and in the pulmonary circulation hypoxemia causes pulmonary vasoconstriction and this increases the pressure in the heart this increases the pressure in the heart and we have to again remember that this child is premature in the prematurity it is having patent foramen ovale and patent foramen ovale causes right to left shunt that is there is a hole which is connecting the right heart and the left heart or rather to be more specific right atrium and the left atrium and the right atrium comprises deoxygenated blood whereas the left atrium is having oxygenated blood and there will be shunting from the right to the left okay this causes mixing up of the oxygenated as well as the deoxygenated blood mixing up of these blood causes cyanosis cyanosis is nothing but the bluish discoloration of the body of the baby so this is the histopathological picture of the hyaline membrane disease you can very well make out the presence of hyaline membrane in this alveolus and also that you can also see 
several collapsed alveoli over here. Now you are suspecting the hyaline membrane disease in this kit. So what is the investigation you are supposed to order? You have to order for chest x-ray. And this is how the chest x-ray appears. So what you were supposed to see was the black color lungs. Okay, because the lungs are having air and the air appears black in the chest x-ray. Whereas now you are seeing white out lung, bilateral white out lung and there is granular pattern and it can also present with bilateral consolidation and ground glass opacity, bilateral ground glass opacity. What do you mean by ground glass opacity? Basically the lungs appear like something like this. Okay, this is nothing but the ground glass. So we can see this particular thing better in CT. So here in the CT image, I think you can very well make out the ground glass opacification of the lungs. Okay. So yes, now you have even diagnosed the condition. The next important step would be treatment of this condition. So how do you treat this baby with hyaline membrane disease? So this baby is having hypoxemia. This baby is having hypoxia. So what should you give? You have to give oxygen along with continuous positive airway pressure. But if there is no improvement in the condition of the baby, then you have to go for intubation and surfactant replacement. So this is how you are going to manage this particular kit with hyaline membrane disease. This is an important topic for your exam and these are the points which you have to know before you appear for the exam. Let's be back with another topic and until then, see you. Bye.